John Higgins fought back well from 2-0 down. So level of two frames deep. The Batman Ronnie O'Sullivan has bounced back with a vengeance. An 89 break in frame five. He's back in front. Three frames to two. This Castella Classic British Open Ronnie final of 1995. The best of 17 frames. We've got eight scheduled for this afternoon. A further nine this evening. So if O'Sullivan wins this one, he knows full well that he can't go into the evening session trailing. Four times this season, O'Sullivan and Higgins have crossed queues. O'Sullivan beat Higgins 5-1 in the last 16 of the 1994 Dubai Classic. 5-3 in the, this year's Benson Edges Masters final. But Higgins has had revenge. One. No wonder with pots like that. Well, the red was very good. This black's going to have to be even better. This is missable. That was a big shot. That was John really Higgins a big one. shot when you're 3-2 behind. That would have been first frame. I'd have expected to knock that one in. But when you're 3-2 behind, that's a massive shot. One. <clears throat> Great try. Couldn't really hit it any harder than that because, of course, you wouldn't be able to get the angle of the cue ball into the pack. So perhaps a little unlucky not to have a pot. May have to be a negative safety shot here with that red being up near the middle pocket. Sullivan, Not quite hard enough. He intended to get the whites in behind the black. Now Higgins got this possibility of a pot on the red to the left-hand bulk pocket. Well, this would be no problem if that red wasn't near the middle pocket. You could just roll it in for choice of blue or bulk colour. He may have to stop the cue ball dead for the pink in the middle here, which is probably the only way of turning this into a shot to nothing. Great shot. One. Brilliant shot. Absolutely brilliant. You know, I mentioned before that Higgins had beaten O'Sullivan twice this season. A lot of pressure pots like that on the way to those victories. Yeah. Higgins whitewashed O'Sullivan 5-0 in the quarter-final of the Grand Prix back in October. Seven. And very impressively beat him 5-4 on the final black by a single point in the quarter-final of the Regal Welsh Open three months ago. Eight. He's got a very unflappable temperament, Willie. Yeah, Stephen Hendry told me two or three years ago we were going to hear a lot of John Higgins. I'd actually played John a couple of times in tournament play. And uh, it was at the time when he was still a rookie, and I wouldn't quite, con you know, convince him. And, you know, I said to Stephen, I'm a bit surprised you say that John Higgins is going to be as good as you think. He said, just wait and see. I practiced with this lad an awful lot. Well, how right has he become? He really is a fantastic player. 40. Well, choice of going into the pink here. Probably won't go into the pink this time. The gap between the pink and the red. If he can get right through that gap, that will really open the reds up. Wants to go right in between the gap lock. That's perfect. Absolutely uh, played to perfection. That bit unlucky to knock the black safe. Nineteen. Twenty. No problem though. Just stun the black in. Automatically on the next red. Looking good. Yes, he doesn't want to finish straight on this next red though, Phil, so he may have to play a little bit firmer than he wanted to. I think he's left himself an angle. 
This now becomes a frame winning opportunity. 27. There is a few loose reds. The three reds to the left of the pink. The bottom one clearly pots in the same pocket he's potting this red into now. After potting that, that will clear another couple of reds out. So no need to play cannon into the reds at the moment. Sometimes you're forced into playing cannon into the reds if you get the wrong angle on the black. But if ever you get the right angle, there's no need to play kisses unless you have to. Just going to have to rub off a red here, though, to get onto the black. 36. And now, because he has the right angle, probably got no choice but to play the cannon. Just going to cannon into the two reds just above the black. Well, has he been fortunate? Doesn't look like it. 43. The red by the blue goes to the right-hand bulk pocket. There's a lot of pressure on that. There's the cannon that didn't work out for him. The beauty of the red, he can play the white towards the jaws of the middle pocket that would almost make this a shot to nothing. So not quite as much pressure as we first thought. Oh, look where the wife is finished though, just in case he'd missed it. Well, Willie, not quite as much pressure as I first thought. Don't try to apologise for my mistake. Well, if that man there didn't know he was going to be in for a tough match, he knows now. Everything that Ronnie O'Sullivan's threw at John Higgins, he's bounced straight back. What a standard this final is producing. And the frightening thing, you know, the combined ages of these two players, Willie, three years younger than you. <laughs> Always make me feel welcome, Phil, don't you? 50. And they've got hair as well, the pair of them. Stop nicking my punchlines. Uh, Sullivan, of course, has the highest break in this match so far. A run of 117 in the second frame of the match. Fifty-six. Fifty-five the difference now, fifty-nine on the table. So just this red, basically a formality. And know Sullivan, we need snookers. And it looks like as though we're going to go to three each. And wouldn't it be great if we could have another century break? But contributions of 40 or more in every frame. Actually, the lowest break in, in any one frame has been in frame four when John Higgins had the highest break of 42. But every other frame, we've had a contribution 63. of 50 or more. Well, we see Hendry knocking in the breaks all the time. We're now seeing these two players. Well, this packed crowd must be 69. absolutely enthralled with what they're seeing today. And as you rightly say, two 19-year-olds producing snooker like this, five or six years 70. ago, it would have never been heard of. That's right, we've got Stephen Hendry, of course, who won ranking events when he was 18, but he was just one on his own. A pair of them, they've never come through together before. 77. Of course, let's not forget the likes of the Mark Williams of this world, the Peter Ebdens, Ken Docketers, Steve Davis is still there, Jimmy White's making a comeback. Well, we are just going to have some great snooker in the next two or three years here on Sky Sports. 85. 86. Ninety-two. Ninety-four. 
O'Sullivan's break of 117 in frame two is now in jeopardy of the highest break of this match. And in fairness, wouldn't it be wonderful? Three all, both making a century break. Both in absolutely top form. Yes, really, eight days ago, this crowd in Plymouth retreated to two century breaks as John Higgins opened the tournament with a 5 1 win over Terry Griffiths. Now in the final, he's made another. And what's more amazing is the fact that he played very, very poorly, I thought, in both his last two matches, but today, superb. Yes, oozing confidence, 119 clearance from Higgins. He's back on level terms. It's three frames each. of John Higgins and Ronnie O'Sullivan certainly flowering at the moment, blossoming into two of the finest players in the game. Frame seven. John Higgins, John Higgins to break. stood up to a lot of pressure here today. He went 2-0 down, O'Sullivan playing tremendously with breaks of 76 and 117. He went 3-2 down as O'Sullivan knocked in another 89 break. His response, a 119 clearance in frame six. is getting boring isn't it they just never miss it really is the highest standard we've seen for quite some time Ronnie will be delighted with the kiss he got of course on the brown which has left him a chance of getting from brown to this only loose red at the top of the table just one loose red it's not too bad is it what a Five. great shot now must leave an angle on the black hmm he was trying up for the blue you see has he fluked the red Ronnie O'Sullivan, five. Well, that could be expensive. Didn't expect him to miss this, although, obviously, positional considerations played a part. Even so, if Higgins can pop the red and maybe drop on the blue, will he, and get a good angle? Yes, never blue, know. Or blue or half or yellow will suffice here, Phil. That's what Ronnie was trying to do. You see, he had the perfect angle on the blue, should that red have gone in. Well, it looks to be too hard. Can go in and out of both, One. of course. So I'll watch this shot two cushions lots of top left hand side in between the in between the yellow and brown two cushions with side well he's playing it in the top actually playing one cushion in the top brilliant shot so it's two ways of breaking the pack Six. well i'm sure this crowd have never seen break building like this at such close quarters. They've seen Hendry, of course, make seven centuries in the UK Championship this year. But they've probably never seen it live before. It's fantastic to watch live this game. Seven. You know, Willie, 23 years ago, Alex Higgins burst onto the scene by winning the world championship at his first attempt beating john spencer now it's another higgins john who's astounding everyone 50. with his consistency his accuracy and his ability to win major titles at such a tender age and the maturity is showing of course two loose reds at a good angle to go into the pack but with those pack of reds at the back of the pack being all in a straight line, they're not going to split easy off the black. He'd really like to, when he has to play the split, play off the blue to hit the pink to open them out. 
Oh, goodness me, that is the worst miss we've seen in the match. That was careless. John Higgins, 22. The first easy shot I think we've missed all, on the whole match. That could just be the injection that Ronnie O'Sullivan needs to get kick-start into action again. Whenever you see a weakness in your opponent, it does make you feel a lot better. One. The red to the right of the pink will possibly Three. pot, and he could have got on that, but Ronnie took the chance there to go into the pack. Surely he's not just going to roll this one in. No, he's playing safe. Big target behind brown and yellow, but a little bit too fine. Ronnie O'Sullivan, three. That was very sloppy. Higgins, 22 points to eight ahead already. And the way he's been compiling breaks. One has to regard this as an opportunity. One. Could he take the lead for the first time in the match? If O'Sullivan's going to have any chance in this frame, you'll know better after this next Eight. shot after this. The angle that John must get on the black is half ball. No, he's got the absolute Nine. perfect angle. Both these players possess a lot of cue power. Just watch the cue ball. It should go into the pack twice here. Spin the first time and then spin again. There it goes. Just not quite enough on it. But look how the way the red spread. You know your stuff, don't you, Willie? 16. Just watch the white. Hits once and then spins again, look. Fantastic shot. Jimmy White and Ronnie O'Sullivan actually are probably the two best players at that shot. They get an awful amount of side on them. Well, you can see him shaking a little bit there. A little bit of nerves coming in, but... 17. Played to perfection. There's the shot. Very awkward, of course. Plays it delicately. Another great shot from John Higgins, knowing playing into those reds, he was almost bound to be on the choice of two or three. He couldn't have placed it better. Very, very difficult now to see him not winning the frame from this position. I think it's the kind of position you'd set the balls up for a practice session. 25. The break goes to 30. And still a lot more to come. Thirty-one. You know, Willie, this is the eighth world ranking event of the season. If Hickens wins today, players from Scotland will have won six of them. Henry won the UK Championship and the European Open. Alan McManus won the Dubai Classic and, of course, Higgins has already won the Skoda Grand Prix in the International Open. 39. Of course, before Hendry came on the scene, Scottish players were never really heard of since the Walter Donaldson game all those years ago. A lot of professionals have come out of Scotland, a lot of very, very good players as well, but nothing quite the likes of the three or four players we've got from Scotland now. And of course, we've also got Billy Snadden and Drew Hendry from Scotland, to name but two of the 10 or 12 players from Scotland who are pros. Really has an abundance of good players now in Scotland. Forty-seven. Well, that bad safety from O'Sullivan has proved very expensive. Once again, 54. the break goes past 50. Seven frames. Only one, we didn't have a 50, and we had a 42 in that. That was really tremendous 55. snooker. Can we have another century? 
possible 105 left on the table. We showed last night in doubling the respotted black against John Parrott. He's a good player of the doubles. He John tried begins. to play the straightforward shot there. Didn't succeed, but nevertheless, the break 62, more than enough to secure the frame. Higgins in the lead for the first time. He's 4-3 ahead. in Plymouth. They've been treated to a feast of snooker, a feast of break building. It's a really close match as well. All the ingredients of a classic. I've almost find myself saying there that Ronnie O'Sullivan needs to win this, but of course five three behind against Ada Sullivan I wouldn't really think means too much because he can win three or four frames in twenty minutes and be well back into the match. But I I think he didn't want to let John Higgins get too far in front of him. They're both playing at the top of their form. Just a couple of lapses in concentration again from Sir Ronnie O'Sullivan. We've seen it and mentioned it many, many times this week. If he ever cuts those little lapses out, he's hard enough to beat as it is. Steve Davis, of course, has said many times, a man with a Rolls-Royce cue action. Yes, Willie, the only problem Although he's made breaks of, one and, of 117, 76 and 89, his safety hasn't been as good as that of his opponent. There's an example. Oh, if he plays this with a lot of topspin, he could stay on the black. That's what he played. He played to Banana to get on the black. Didn't quite get enough topspin on. The two reds that are nearest one. the black spot, what he was trying to do is really play with a lot of topspin there and make it swerve round and get onto the black. Just watch the cue ball here. There it goes in. Now what he's tried to do, see how the white tried to banana? He didn't quite get enough topspin on. Probably the red was just a fraction too far off the cushion. John Higgins won. As I said before, Willie, although Sullivan's been impressive in the frames he's won, in the four he's lost, he's managed to aggregate only 23 points. That tells its own story. Yes, it happens so often. Uh, I remember losing a match once against Murdo McLeod. I made four century breaks and lost 5-4. Big breaks only win one frame. And that's something that Ronnie O'Sullivan is finding out today. Well, Higgins is usually very reliable with the rest. Not on that occasion. And the way they've both been playing, this is a chance for four each. One. This is just what the doctor orders for Ronnie. Nice, easy opening red. Red spread everywhere. Just a chance to get his cue arm going again. And it's such a shame that we're only having eight frames in this first session. This has been absolutely fantastic to watch. The match, of course, started just after one o'clock. We're now just after three o'clock. Seven. We've had the interval. And, of course, we've already... Best part of eight frames. Seems to have lasted only about ten minutes. To me, it's been superb. Eight. You know, the first seven frames of this final took two minutes longer than the first frame of the Chris Small-McPrice match in the last 32. Thirteen. Fourteen. Oh, long blue. Still two or three loose reds. He'd ideally like to get onto one near the black spot very soon to make the black available in both pockets. 
but he can get onto the black off this next shot. And that would get the black back onto its spot. 19. All he mustn't do now, he mustn't get straight on this black. 20. Well, he's not straight, but I'm not sure whether he can get onto the red that's nearest the white. We'll soon tell. Uh, the angle's nice. Yes, he's just come perfect there. And this is something that players sometimes think about. He can roll the red in. No need to smash the pack open. But where that last red is, he may be able to play into the pack, knowing that he's going to be on that loose red if he doesn't get a bad kiss. And that's the angle he's left himself. He wants to hit the outside one of these three reds you can see at the front of the pack here. Yeah, that's a little bit unlucky. He hit them too full. The Hendry thumb up there. When he goes into the pack now, Stephen Hendry sticks on them. He puts the thumb up. Just to see if we can see this. Could have perhaps hit a little bit harder because that would have forced the white through a little bit more. But in saying that, he didn't mean to hit the middle of the three reds. He wanted to hit one of the outside ones. So life for John Higgins in this frame yet. Now, Ronnie, you need to play a good safety. If it doesn't kiss the yellow, it's good. If it kisses the yellow, it's bad. Well, once again, Ronnie O'Sullivan, the only difference in the two players. They're both absolute class. The only safety game is just not good enough sometimes. Referee John Williams just doing the cleaning job on the cue ball. He knows how important this frame is. 5-3 lead, which is what you need against somebody like Ronnie O'Sullivan, because if he has one of those bursts of three or four frames, you need to have it covered. Hey, you just saw the little flicker of the eye. Stephen Hendry, the only player that looks at the pocket when playing the shot. We've now got two players. I never knew that before. 16. Just watch that right eye. There it is. Look at the pocket, back onto the cue ball. Quite amazing. I thought Stephen Hendry was the only person to do that. We now have John Higgins as well. Seventeen. When Ronnie O'Southern last appeared in the final of a world ranking event, in the Thailand Open last month, he trailed James Watt in a 6-2 after the first session. He won the first three frames of the evening and was right back in contention. So don't write him off if he does fall 5-3 down, but it will be a long road back. 23. I'm sure that any player that played against Ronnie O'Sullivan in a two-session match would be really happy to be two or three frames in front because... As we've mentioned before, three or four frames, he can win in ten minutes. But can he win three or four frames against the man in the form of John Higgins? Ronnie O'Sullivan very rarely watches his opponent when they're playing. He hasn't took his eyes off John Higgins until then. But once again, back on watching him play. Thirty. Only five points behind now. That black gives John Higgins a three-point lead. The four remaining reds couldn't be better placed. Every chance for a winning clearance. O'Sullivan trying to become only the third player this season to successfully defend a world ranking title. And if he does, he'll be in very good company.
Stephen Hendry won the European Open for the second year in succession. Steve Davis complete the, com completed the double in the Regal Welsh Open. But John Higgins wants to dethrone the British Open champion. Make no mistake about that. Break so far. He's now got a little bit more work to do. Oh, that's a wonderful 44. shot. That is a great recovery. That was the only pressure shot he had to play in this break. This is another one, though. About two cushions perfectly on the black. This is not a guaranteed one. But it is when you're playing as well as him. The lead's 17. So both reds required. 51. And two colours. Fifty-two. Once again, the trend, the break over 50. We've seen lots of sessions where one player has dominated and make a string of breaks, but it's very unusual to see both players contributing with breaks of 50 or more. 59. They've both had centuries. They've both had other contributions of 50 or more in every single frame bar one. Truly has 60. been a remarkable session. I remember, you know, two years ago, John Higgins reached the quarter-final of the British Open. He was very disappointed to lose. 67. Disgusted with his performance. I assured him then that he would have many opportunities to make amends. He's certainly doing that here today. He's developed into one of the 70. best players in the game. On current form, arguably the best. Well, I'd still have to have my few pounds on Stephen Hendry if they meet. But I'm a big believer in this boy as well. And the one he's playing. Well, Snooker's in for a, a great period while all these players are still around. Nothing more than concentration made him miss that pink, but it didn't matter. One drop. John Higgins has played superb snooker this afternoon. He's made breaks of 55, 42, 119, 62, and that's 74 to close. And that's why he takes a 5-3 lead into this evening's session. of the 1995 Castella Classic British Open live from Plymouth here on Sky Sports and at the end of the first session John Higgins has come from behind to take control he leads Ronnie O'Sullivan by five frames to three and he's won five of the last six frames and he's done it by playing some absolutely sparkling snooker uh, Willie Thorne is with me and uh, Willie we said that John hadn't played particularly well in his previous two rounds well he's certainly making up for that now that was just breathtaking. I mean, uh, the first four frames I had the pleasure of wa watching with you in the studio, the next four, but even greater pleasure in trying to commentate on it, because it's just, 
It is. We talked about R Ronnie O'Sullivan on a Rolls Royce Q action. This fellow must be a Ferrari Q action because we've seen snooker there by both players of the highest standard. It's very, very hard to compete with that, whoever they're playing. Ronnie O'Sullivan can't be too disappointed. He's had a couple of lapses in concentration once again with his safety play. You know, we have to smack Ronnie on the hand a few times because he's just so good and he just needs to sometimes with his safety just have a little think because really he, he's only behind purely because of bad safety, not because he's missed balls uh, and Higgins has outplayed him, just purely because he's let Higgins in with too many easy chances. And if he does let John in, he's been absolutely unforgiving. It is fantastic. I mean, John Higgins was very disappointed in his last two matches. Not so much against John Parrott. I mean, Mike Hallett's had a great tournament there here this week, but Mike Hallett didn't play at all against John Higgins, and John Higgins really didn't play himself and still managed to win 5-0, and I thought, well, perhaps he couldn't win the tournament. But he, along with Ronnie O'Sullivan, have these extra gears we're now talking about that Stephen Hendry and Steve Davis have had over the years, and these two players have both got it. When they've got it to do, they can do it, and they just step up a gear. This match is by no means o over, as we've said on commentary, because Ronnie O'Sullivan can win three or four frames in a matter of ten minutes. Mm. I mean, they're both very, very, very fluent players, as, as you say, but I just wonder, Ronnie would never confess to uh, anybody expecting anybody to beat him but whether John's just getting a bit of a mental stranglehold over Ronnie now he's beaten him on the last two occasions mm. he's ahead now and I wonder if that's just beginning to play prey on uh, Ronnie's mind it was interesting because when I was doing the commentary on the last four frames I have obviously more chance to watch what the players are doing when they're sitting down in their chairs watch the way they're playing Ronnie O'Sullivan normally doesn't watch his opponents he normally has a look around the crowd has his head bowed when he was playing Dennis Sally the night we saw it never watched Dennis play a shot whether it's because he doesn't like the way Dennis plays or whether he doesn't like the way other people play. Against John Higgins, he's virtually watched every shot he's played. Now, whether he's impressed or just trying to kind of work out why he's like losing or why he's letting these frames slip, I don't know. But he's watched every shot that Ronnie O'Sullivan's played and it's been very interesting to watch. Now, when they're both 19 years of age they're both great talents but the contrast between the two of them really is fascinating to watch isn't it because uh, not just as players but as personalities they're, they're completely <laughs> different john higgins spends a lot of time over here with his father who's come up with him to try and uh, you know he had the split from team sweaty shop which i'm sure now mr doyle is not very pleased about the fact that john higgins is really playing superb snooker this year Johnny Higgins has his father with him, they just go out for dinner together, they sit very, very quietly in the press room. Ronnie likes to have a laugh and a giggle, he's got a couple of pals down. Likes to go in the bar and have a drink, but not, doesn't have excess mm. alcohol or anything like that, he behaves himself well. But they, you know, Johnny Higgins will be in bed at 10 o'clock, Ronnie will want to stay up till 2 o'clock. You know, it's, it's so completely different, but uh, it's so fascinating to watch these players, it really is. It, it certainly is. John's a very modest young man as well, and I know last night, for instance, against John Parrott, that he was feeling pretty miserable, feeling very much under the weather, mm. but nothing was said about that at all until after the match, which was great sportsmanship. Right? Absolutely. I'm sure he wouldn't have even said anything if he mm. had lost the match. So that's mm. the kind of player that John Higgins is. He's been brought up playing like with great players. He's, you know, he's trying to realise there's more to the game than, than on the table, something that some of the other players have got to realise, that there's more to the game than just potting snooker balls, and John Higgins is trying to groom himself into being a professional snooker player, and he is that on the table, and he is that off the table as well. OK, well, uh, certainly an uphill task for Ronnie now. There's no question about that, five frames to three, but uh, you'd never write him off, would you? Absolutely not. I wouldn't write him off if it was 6-2. We saw him against James Watana in Thailand, 6-2 behind, and got back in almost to be favourite to win the match. Got back to 6-5, and uh, I'm really looking forward to this evening. Yeah, absolutely. Best of 17 frames, of course. It means that they play eight frames this afternoon, completed now, five frames to three in John Higgins' favour. A maximum of nine frames to come this evening, then. It should be an absolutely magnificent night down here at the Plymouth Pavilions. Two young men out there doing very good jobs indeed, but of course there is a third man out there who's doing a particularly good job as well, and that's the referee, John Williams. It's not an easy job by any means. It's not always appreciated either, but it's a job that referees carry out with a certain amount of style, and panache, uh, as illustrated this week by John Street. I just got an invitation through the mail. Your presence requested this evening is on a top hat, a white tie, and tail. Nothing now could take the wind out of my sail. Because I'm invited to step out this evening with top hat, white tie, and tails. Oh, I'm putting on the top hat, tying up the white tie, brushing off my tails. I'm building up my shirt front, putting in the shirt stud, polishing my nails. I'm stepping out, my dear, to breathe an atmosphere that... The hardest part, I think, is being able to concentrate for long periods 
and being willing to stand on your feet for four or five hours at a time. You're standing behind some curtains and there's a thousand people, 600 people, whatever it might be out there, and all of a sudden the MC says you're a referee. Two teenagers who are taking world snooker by storm and today in Plymouth they've been showing us precisely why. Very good uh, evening to you and uh, welcome to the final session, uh, the session which will decide just who will hold the title of Castelli, uh, Castella Classic British Open Champion for 1995. Will it be Ronnie O'Sullivan or will it be John Higgins over the next two or three hours? We'll find out. This afternoon snooker, well, it's been rather like a dream sequence. One brilliant break has followed another. Ronnie O'Sullivan opened up with two terrific breaks to take the first two frames. John Higgins hit back with runs of 119, 79 and 62. He leads by five frames to three. And the first to nine, of course, will lift that uh, trophy and a first prize of £60,000. Now then, I sorted out that it definitely is, so I'll say a very good evening to Willie Thorne <laughs> and Mark Johnston-Allen, who are with me again in the studio. It really was scintillating snooker this afternoon, wasn't it, It Willie? was absolutely. It's nice to see you're human as well, by the way. <laughs> it was absolutely superb. I mean, you, you mentioned the word dream snooker, and uh, Mark and I had the pleasure of watching that. I had the pleasure of commentating it on the last four. And I don't think I've ever seen any two players at one time play as good as we've seen this afternoon. We've obviously seen individual performances at the highest level, but this, this afternoon both players played tremendously well, Mark. Mm. And I think it's very, very important for Ronnie O'Sullivan tonight if he is to get back into this. He's by no means out of this match, but I think the first frame for me is very, very important. If he does happen to go 6-3 down, the way John Higgins is playing, that's a very, very tall order to try and reverse and get the win. So I think tonight the first frame is so, so important for Ronnie O'Sullivan. Yes, it certainly is. And don't forget, of course, just four frames away from victory is uh, John Higgins. Now, before the match, uh, Harry Findlay, our gambling guru, said that even money was excellent value about the young Scotsman John Higgins. I suppose he thinks it's even better value now. Well, let's hear from Harry. Evening, Harry. Well, Jeff, as a fellow genuine sports enthusiast, I'm sure you really appreciated the sensational first eight frames we had this afternoon. And if tonight's second session is as good, this could really prove to be a difficult match to call. Johnny Higgins, the even money outside at the outset, is now a red-hot 4-11 favourite, courtesy of his two-frame lead. I've supported John throughout the week and see no reason to desert him now. One surefire winner to come out of this tournament is the fantastic format we've had this week, appreciated by players, spectators and punters alike. And I can assure you, the spectators have turned up in their droves tonight to see these two young stars. And I can assure them all that both on and off the table, they're a great pair of lads. Johnny Higgins, from a personal and a professional point of view, is an especial favourite of mine. And over the last few years, I've been to the well with him many times and keep coming back with my hands paved with gold. I'm sure with the support he gets from his great family, I'll be going many times again. I'd like to thank him, along with all the other players who have played this week, and help make this one of the great weeks in the sporting calendar. Thanks, Harry. Well said. Uh, an 11 to 4 on chance. Now, that seems to me awfully skinny, Willie. Well, I, I think I'd rather take 2-1 to one Ronnie O'Sullivan than I would 11-4 to four on John Higgins. But in saying that, you know, Ronnie's only really behind in this match because of three or four bad safety shots, you know, and uh, I think it's still a lot closer than that. I mean, he is a tremendous potter, isn't he, Mark? And if Ronnie gets into the flow of things, really, he can turn this match around very quickly. Well, with, like what we said a minute ago, he's certainly not out of this match. But the thing that surprised me before this match started, I, I had Ronnie O'Sullivan a firm favourite, but it seems that John Higgins had quite a bit in reserve. And, uh, you know... Ronnie O'Sullivan's going to have to play exceptionally well tonight if he is to win this match. 
Well, at the moment, it's John Higgins who leads by five frames to three, and of course we'll be seeing the outcome of that very shortly indeed. Uh, there will be an interval after four frames, by the way, uh, at which point we'll be looking why, at uh, why Plymouth's youth have been making their own pilgrimage to pay tribute to a man who threatens to overshadow Francis Drake in the city's folklore. That's all to come. Bit of fun. But first of all, the serious business, because there's a lot at stake. A big title and a big prize as well. Who'll be claiming it? Will it be John Higgins or will it be Ronnie O'Sullivan? Higgins leads by five frames to three. Sit back and enjoy the evening session now. Here's our MC, Alan Hughes. Ladies and gentlemen, will you now welcome the man in charge of his fifth British Open final, international referee, John Williams. And ladies and gentlemen, now to the players, both from tomorrow's world. First, a brilliant young sculpt with a game way beyond his years, who's had a season to savour forever, because tonight he is appearing in his fifth major final in just six months. Cool and classy, with a temperament that makes world champions, will you welcome, please, onto centre stage, just 19 years of age, the reigning regal Welsh champion, the reigning international open champion, the Wizard of Wishaw, John Higgins! Ladies and gentlemen, his opponent, also 19 years of age and arguably the most naturally talented player the game has ever produced, whose devil-may-care cavalier style has earned him an army of fans all over the world, making his fourth major final appearance since winning this title last year, oozing confidence and full of self-belief. He makes his entrance as the reigning Wembley Masters champion and the defending British Open champion, ladies and gentlemen, the rocket himself, Ronnie Sullivan! <laughs> Well, what a fantastic entrance, and I'm sure the match will live up to that uh, entrance as well. Briefly, Willie, 5-3 at the moment. John Higgins for you. Big favourite, but not 4-11, to 11, and I just hope that it, the match can be half as good as this afternoon, because it was a treat this afternoon. Mark, you went for Ronnie earlier on. Yeah, I'm going to change my decision to John with a two-frame lead. I'm, I think uh, he's got to look strong favourite at this point. Well, I think we're in for an absolute treat, come what may. Let's join our commentators now uh, for the first part of this evening snooker, and it's... Uh, Bill Yates and Jim Weich. Thanks, Jeff. Well, my opinion, snooker and Sky Sports viewers will be the winner. This has got all the ingredients of a classic. So much at stake, and both players in top form. John Higgins, Skoda Grand Prix and International Open champion this season. If he wins tonight, he'll have earned more ranking points this season than anyone else. Ronnie O'Sullivan bidding to become the first player ever to successfully defend the British Open title. He'll be the fourth player this season to win back-to-back -back 
ranking events from one year to the next. It would be fantastic if Ronnie can start the first two frames of this session the way he started the match. And if that red's any indication, that's exactly what he's got in mind. You know, Jim, you've got to be a fantastic player to win Four. the event for two successive years. This season, we've seen Stephen Hendry do it. We've seen Steve Five. Davis do it. And James Watanar. Can Ronnie O'Sullivan join that select group? Twelve. Thirteen. Absolute tailor-made opening for O'Sullivan here. Just got to ensure to control 15. the white and take the points that are on offer. Twenty-one. Now, if this red doesn't pass to the right-hand center, and it doesn't look as though it does, Ronnie's going to have to make a better pot than he'd like to have to. That was the danger. And now he's turned it right over to John Higgins. He most certainly has. The crowd of fours, 28 points on the board. But the way Higgins has been so clinical throughout this match, you've got to fancy him to make a very substantial break here. One. Yes, the only drawback is the fact that it's the first frame of an entirely new session. So both players still a little jittery, understandable. And it only takes one miss hit. Certainly confident, Jim. Screwing back off the bottom cushion. Perfect for the black. Much like O'Sullivan, he was forced to have to make a better red than he would have liked. But in contrast, he got his. And you know, Mark Johnston Allen made a very important point I feel is very relevant. This really is a gargantuan frame as far as O'Sullivan is concerned. If Higgins should go three clear, very tall order then to pull back. 24. You know, Jim, the flag of St. Andrew flying high in snooker circles these days. 32. If Higgins were to win tonight, he would be the sixth Scottish winner of a ranking event this season. 33. It would be Higgins' third triumph. Hendry's won two. Alan McManus won. And really, Phil, not enough credit given to Stephen Hendry. He's lifted the game north of the border. 
They've all had to reach new heights just to stay with them. That's right, Jim, and on a personal level, John Higgins no doubt benefited greatly from his couple of years practicing on a regular basis with the world champion. A lot of concern already on O'Sullivan's face. 43. 15 points the difference. This pink will take that to 21. 49. So he won't have to concern himself with that very awkwardly placed red 49. on the left-hand cushion in the middle between the side and the bottom corner. 50. 57. Already, John Higgins has made five half centuries in this match. One of them went on to be a century. 58. Has he gotten enough side in the white? 65. If he can put this into the middle, it's a great positional shot. Well, that was a surprise. Didn't expect him to catch the near jaw. That's just what he did. That was the frame ball, and it eluded him. But what a packed house we've got here. They need more seats. What's well, not going to help Ronnie's cause? He's 36 behind. He needs a color. If he can't get it, he's going to have to try and lay as good a snooker on John Higgins as possible and hope that he misses it. But he's not making his work easy, is he, Phil? He's just knocked the blue into a safe position. Yellow's already a little safe. This is going to be a tough one for O'Sullivan to pull out. And you can't get more side contact than that. After potting this black, O'Sullivan will be 28 behind with 27 on. Eight. Stretching out over the table. Still confident Ten. enough to take the yellow. Now, can he just get this white softly in behind the brown? He's got to miss the middle bump if he tries that. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 10. Higgins can get through, and chance missed. Johnny O'Sullivan remains in his chair, even though he only needed Here's one snooker. Seed. What a Three good start to the evening seven. session for the Scot. A 65 break. He's now 6-3 ahead. And he's away from the title.
You're watching Sky Sports 2. Every day, thousands of people like you join the search for a brighter future. It's not easy. You face a long, challenging climb through a rapidly changing world. You want to get ahead, but you need an edge. You need training. Only through training can you get the skills and qualifications needed to lift yourself above the crowd. To realize your ambitions throughout your working life. To reach your goal. Call 0345 665588 for an information pack and let training free your potential. The rewards for victory at the Castella Classic British Open Silver Trophy. Will it go to John Higgins? It certainly looks like that at the moment. 6 3 up and in control. Ronnie O'Sullivan, well capable of rattling off three or four frames in no time. Ten frames. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. O'Sullivan breaking off. Very well documented to be a lost frame. But I really think he threw the towel in a bit premature in that last one. Just needed to contact the green, and he would have only wanted one snooker. Win a frame like that if you don't try. Yes, I couldn't agree with you more, Jim. He's got to learn to be patient. He's just said than done. And he is a virtue in professional snooker. O'Sullivan well, now in desperate need of something to try and the momentum in this match. You know, Jim, the standard of break building and scoring in this match, truly phenomenal. Here we are in frame 10, you know. The slowest frame so far, a marathon, one and a half minutes. Yes, everyone touting these two as the future of professional snooker. It might well be the present and future. <coughs> Packed house here in Plymouth. The crowds all week have been very healthy. Snooker very popular in the West Country. And they've come out in the droves to see the top players in the game. Well, John's taken a lot of time gathering himself. It looks like he's going to have a go at this long one. One. Never touched the side. Oozing confidence. Just have a look at this. That head didn't waver off the cue. Eight. Nine. He really is. 
is queuing as well as he's as he's probably queued all year he's already got well. two titles to his credit just looks in unstoppable form 13. that's right jim and although it was a minor event john higgins no doubt got a lot of confidence from winning the australian open as well made three 140 breaks in that during the summer and he hasn't looked back since Yeah, but he didn't beat anybody in the final. 20. No, just Willie Thorne. Get your point. 21. You know, one trait that Steve Davis carried when he was in his prime and really dominating the game of snooker was how cleanly the balls went into the pockets. Everything never threatened the sides that's what John Higgins looks like On the black. It's on the spot. Okay. well John got the cue ball cleaned but he also wanted referee John Williams to give the black a little wipe with the white gloves as well Better get the black there, he's got no excuse. 28. Awkward queuing, but he hasn't got to do anything with the cue ball. Formality, this one. 20. Yeah, I think he needs the extended spider with this. Can't see him missing it though, Jim. Reputation safe for one more shot at least. Twenty nine points already, Higgins' is break. Thirty six. Very close to being able to get that red just below the pink. But he's starting to struggle with the position. Under hit that one. If he takes this pink on, it's going to be with the rest. And there's loads of pressure on it. Agreed, Jim. Normally very re reliable with the rest. But as you say, tough one. right into the center of the pocket. 43. Still being made to work a little more than he would like. Now that he's developed the reds, the pot's become a little bit more vital. Forty-four. He made that one look easy. Potting it in a cute angle to the middle. With awkward queuing. Is never that. Forty-nine. He's been kept very quiet. Hasn't had a lot to say yet. And only time will tell if he's going to get a chance. 57. 
Higgins has now made six half century breaks. And one in each of the last five frames. Sixty-five. Couple interested spectators. John's mother and his girlfriend made the trip down from Scotland. Six and a half hours by car it took them. And they're hoping that it's going to be a very worthwhile trip. O'Sullivan needs snookers, of course. 73. 67 points still on the table. A possible 140. 74. Eighty-one. He doesn't play as 82. fast as Ronnie O'Sullivan, but he makes the game look just as easy. Eighty-nine. Suffering in his chair, nothing you can do about it. You just hope that John Higgins goes off the boil. 90. 97. And a possible 43 still left. That leaves a possible 140 remaining. Not even close to the high breaks we've had here this week. Stephen Hendry's 145. An absolute gem. <clears throat> A truly phenomenal standard being produced by John Higgins. He's now made six century breaks in the tournament. 106. 112. 114. 139 now available, of course, because he took the pink off the last red. 117. I've never seen a tournament with so many outstanding total clearances. 121. Stephen Hendry made a 145 and a 142 in the same match against Drew Henry. Ronnie O'Sullivan had a 142 against Dave Harold. Jimmy White had a 141 against Mark Flowerdew in the first round. And now a magnificent 132, unfortunately, because he purposely went in off the black. Nevertheless, what a great break. John Higgins forges on towards the title. He's now 7-3 ahead and two frames away from the first prize of £60,000. International cricket, Australia v the West Indies. Exclusive highlights from the second test, day two to night at ten on Sky Sports.
tutti questi anni non mi è mai sembrato che sentisse la mancanza di una macchina. No, infatti. John Higgins in complete command of the situation at the moment. That's what he's going for, the Castella Classic British Open title. Just two frames away from a first prize of £60,000. And you know, Jim, if he wins the next two frames, he'll avenge a 9-3 defeat by Ronnie O'Sullivan in the final of the Benson Edges Masters just a couple of months ago. That would be the icing on the cake. I'm sure O'Sullivan has got plenty to say about that. Yes, but again, is John Higgins going to give Ronnie the chance to reply? His form already this evening suggests otherwise. Of course, we've seen O'Sullivan play many times. Brilliant snooker but not in quite, quite such lengthy spells as John Higgins. The only person I've ever seen play this dominantly, Stephen Hendry. He just isn't missing a single shot. One. And you knew that because he could cue into the white with ease, he was always going for that open red. That's the only thing that's going to slow him down. Five. Good aggressive shot off the brown to try and split the reds. Accomplished it, but hasn't landed on one. John Higgins, five. You know, John Higgins was very fortunate last night. He had a stomach upset that undoubtedly handicapped him when he played John Parrott. But he also had some very good luck. Hasn't relied on good luck today. But that last safety shot was very fortunate. It's very tense, isn't it? A lot at stake. £92,000 in prize money up for grabs today. 60000 to the winner, 32000 to the runner-up. Good safety shot from O'Sullivan there. Purposely playing side to leave the cue ball on the left-hand side of the table as we look. There certainly doesn't look to be an easy path to balk for Higgins to take the white here. So just a containing safety. And he's left Ronnie a choice of reds to the middle. One. And just how important, Phil, is this visit from O'Sullivan? Seven. 
yes, Jim, we've talked about John Higgins and his heavy scoring. In the three frames of Servants won, he's made breaks of 76, 117 and 89. No slouch in the break building department today. Eight. Eleven. Ronnie's got a little work to do with this break. 16. A lot of those reds tend to cover each other to the bottom corner that he's looking at right now. 17. That one opened the path for two others, so that'll certainly aid him. Thirty. Taking this red, again, will free the pocket for the red just above it. Thirty-one. Really made to have to work, though. Thirty-one points it's at. And he'd really like to turn it into a frame winner. Thirty-four. 35. After all that bombardment, coming back strong. 41. 42. Goes a long way to say about O'Sullivan's character right here. 48. As you said, Phil, totally shellacked in the preceding two frames. And to be able to come back here and put this together. 53. 54. Is an excellent positional shot 59. off the blue. 65 points now the difference. 51 on the table. Higgins requires snookers. 66. 67. Just tried to flick those two reds open. But he's got an angle on the black and left-handed. Ronnie O'Sullivan, not quite. And the break. But a good break in the circumstances. 67. Could the fight back start there? It's now 7-4 to John Higgins.
You're watching Sky Sports 2. Dalmeal original sauce still uses only the best natural ingredients, but now the jar is 10% bigger, so you can enjoy that much more mouth-watering bolognese. Dalmeo original, now the jar is 10% bigger. Dalmeo, only the best will do. John Higgins certain to go over a quarter, quarter of a million pounds in prize money this season. So is Ronnie O'Sullivan, and little wonder the way they played this evening. Indeed, throughout the match, produced a standard of snooker on a whole new plane. Frame 12. John Ronnie Higgins 7-4 up, needing two more frames to capture the title. But Ronnie O'Sullivan showed in the last frame he's in no mood to throw in the towel. Ronnie O'Sullivan turned away from the table with a disgusted look on his face. That would tend to suggest John Higgins might be able to squeeze through to pot the red in bulk. Yes, I don't think he wanted to let him be able to play safe off of it. And he's looking at this red on the right-hand side. A rare miss. We haven't seen many of these. Certainly thought about going in. Seven four behind. If O'Sullivan can take this frame, get into the interval seven five. Eight. He will have weathered the storm. Nine. Much like Higgins did against him at the outset of this match. Not the best of splits, but at least he's got a red. Sixteen. Got to be careful here. Got to keep a foot on the floor. He's tall, but he'd need a step ladder to get at that one.
uh, they've opened very nicely. 24. Here's the overhead camera. Cue ball into the pack. Developing well. 25. You know, Jim, the first three frames of the evening session took 31 minutes to complete. And this looks like being another sprint. Well, he's certainly got to hope there's a plant in that cluster because he's lost the cue ball on the intended red. There's what he's looking at. I don't like him to get this one. That was definitely a rash. He ran out of position. He, did, he should have taken his medicine. Instead of that, he tried to force the issue. And it could prove to be a very expensive mistake. Thirty-two points the lead. These are never easy into blind pockets. And you know they're nervous watching. One. Happy to see that one drop. One thing that has very, been very consistent throughout this match is John Higgins has really administered punishment with every mistake that has come his way, especially the careless ones. He's got a chance here again, I think, given the very ambitious plant that O'Sullivan took on. Four. Win or lose today, O'Sullivan needs to learn some lessons from this tournament. He's too impetuous for his own good at the moment. Of course, very entertaining, but we've seen throughout the years the great entertainers don't really consistently win titles. Alex Higgins, Jimmy White, cases in point. Eleven. It's the steady ones. They're the ones that accumulate titles on a regular basis. Steve Davis, Stephen Hendry, John Higgins in the same mould. Seventeen. Eighteen. Fourteen points the difference. And there's still a number of awkward reds. The two together you see there on the left-hand side of the table, the one nearest the right-hand cushion. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. He's got excellent follow-through. Really cues the ball well. Of course, so does Ronnie O'Sullivan. 27. That's why they tend to make it move around so effortlessly. 28. Is he the same thing that Hendry does? 
over to the pocket. Thirty-five. That black takes John into the lead. Thirty-six. Tough pot coming up, but at least he's developed a red. 42. Forty-three. Pulled a rabbit out of the hat with that pot, but he's going to need to do it again if he wants to continue on here. Green looks favorite. But he's opting for the safety, it looks like. John Higgins, 43. Another very useful effort from John Higgins. 11 points he leads by. The pressure really on Ronnie O'Sullivan. It's a frame he's got to win. Should he fall four down with five to play? It really would be a lung road back. Ronnie very hesitant to release those two reds. That would open the frame right up. Well, that's worked out well. Tend to hit it like that. He wanted a full contact, but he's gotten away with it. The Reds are now open. Sullivan will be relieved to see the cue ball so close to that ball cushion. But the red's on. <coughs> this could be frame ball if he gets it. deserve better position One. what a super effort just look at the concentration and determination in those eyes two bad kisses on the trot eight you know they talk about Peter Ebden's mental strength and determination Look at John Higgins, willing every ball into the pocket. And now a long red. 
and a big chance for O'Sullivan. This Nine. match has been the biggest endorsement for the entertainment value in professional snooker that you're probably going to see in a long time. Not a very good shot there. 60. It was always going to be a tough clearance with the green and brown so close and the pink close to the ball cushion. What can he do here? Recovery pot. Perfect. 18. Just one point the difference. Both players need green to pink. Well, he went and had a look to see if the brown would pass 18. the pink. So we had to believe he was going to attempt that difficult green. Just one point the difference in favour of John Higgins. And you know, we've seen that many breaks today, Jim. The first frame, really, it's been close. Just oh. fell into the pocket and be vital. Ronnie O'Sullivan, four. O'Sullivan's got his hand on the table now. He can clip this green in. There you see the frame time just nearing 16 minutes and easily the longest frame we've had in the first 12. That in itself amazing. Three. Wanted to avoid the kiss on the pink. He did so. Seven. Ten the difference. So just this blue needed. And then Higgins would require one snooker. Twelve. Ronnie O'Sullivan does nothing half-heartedly. Still intended the cannon into the pink. Ronnie O'Sullivan, twelve. Fifteen the difference. 13 on the table. Mind you, we saw John Higgins win one frame against John Parrott in the semi-final from this kind of situation. He needed one snooker on pink and black, and he did it. Certainly O'Sullivan, if he can get out of this one unscathed, is going to feel a lot better in the interval than his counterpart. But he's not there yet. Especially if that black goes in the middle. Ooh, so close. A look of relief. Given Higgins chances. And he knows it. Sometimes situations like this can come back and haunt you. Just a few members of the audience thought that John Higgins was trying to pop the pink. 
I'm obviously not aware that he needs snookers. Black, not really ideally situated, from which John Higgins can try and extract a foul. engrossed like everyone else. It really is a classic encounter so far. And this could be a classic snooker. So close. But now Sullivan should wrap the frame up. He's tempting fate, Phil. There's the time, 21 minutes by nine minutes, the longest frame of this very fluent contest so far. Once more, a valiant effort. The oohs and ahs from the crowd, they're really into this one. I think there are a few of them still think that John Higgins is trying to pop this pink. If he does hold through in this frame, what a big one it was keeps his hopes alive of defending this crown. They're hoping it's gonna be going north of the border. Just to repeat, 15 points the difference, 13 on the table. Sullivan just can't slot this pink away. Surely now, though.
mum sitting in the audience. I'm not really nervous. Actually, really? I'm not really. No, I'm quite calm. Actually, calm at the minute because I feel John's playing so well. And uh, is does he get that from you? Because he seems very mature and very calm, doesn't he, when he's playing? Oh, I, I don't. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, sometimes I, I suppose I can be. Tonight, I definitely don't feel nervous. I must admit, I feel I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying it because both boys are playing so well. They're really, it's a great, it's a great game. You know, the two of them are doing so well, and uh, I'm sitting enjoying it. You're feeling it. Really, good. I'm really enjoying it. Now they know, they know each other, don't they, Ronnie and John, for, from quite a long way back. Absolutely, I have some. What about thirteen? So you could say about five years. Really, you know, that's in, when they were on the amateur circuit. And did you, when the when, they, when they started off on the amateur circuit together, did you know that they were going to be two completely different characters? <laughs> How would you From describe one, Ronnie go. and John, then? Go on. <laughs> the differences. How could I describe the difference? Well, John was... Ronnie was always more mature, I felt, you know, than John. John was younger. But then... They're, they're just different characters, really. Just entirely different to them, but... They'll always be, I think they'll always be rivals, the two of them, coming right through the circuit. I mean, from the world go, you know, they're, they're great friends, but when it's out in that table, they're... They're big rivals. They want to, they want to, each one is so determined to win, you know. Josephine Higgins there talking about her son John and Ronnie O'Sullivan. I think she's absolutely spot on. They're going to be big, big rivals for years to come. We're, we're all friends off the table, but on the table, as we've seen tonight, they're both at each other's throats all the time. And it, it was nice to, to, to see the, yeah, the conversation there with Jane and Josephine, the fact that, you know, that she'd watched him come up along with Ronnie and that Ronnie was always older for his age because Ronnie's been on the circuit for, since he was 14 years of age, playing in all the pro around the country and things. Whereas John Higgins, in fairness, has only come into the game this, since we've seen him on television. I'd never heard of John Higgins until Stephen Hendry told me about him. But Ronnie O'Sullivan had been playing all around the country and winning pro -Ams at the tender age of 14 and 15. Yeah. Yeah, very, very mature player, Ronnie. Okay. From well, early age. they've both shown the maturity in different ways during the course of the week. No question about that. The crowd are back in their seats. There's our six-year-old friend, Sam Borthwick, and his dad once again. I wonder if it's going to be a late night for him. Ronnie O'Sullivan will be hoping that it is. He's four frames away from victory. John Higgins, two frames away from becoming the 1995 British Open champion. Willie Thorne is about to dash into the commentary booth to join Phil Yates. Let's first of all hear from our MC, Alan Hughes. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome back John Higgins and Ronnie O'Sullivan. Higgins to break. In the last world ranking event final on the circuit, the Thailand Open, Ronnie O'Sullivan also found himself 7-5 down going into the final session. On that occasion, he was beaten by James Watiner. Can he pull this one out of the bag? This is a massively important frame. Well, the expression on Ronnie's face tells us that this red is potable in the top corner pocket. But very, very difficult queuing. John Higgins at the moment just filling his glass of water up. And he'll be pleasantly surprised when he comes to the table to see that this red is potable. The only problem is there's no colour coming after it, I don't think. Difficult to remain on the black unless you can get a full ball kiss on the red next to it. Yeah, just making sure of the, the red. The pink is on in the middle.
Oh, that was a great shot. When you've been in, put under pressure like Ronnie O'Sullivan's put Higgins under the two frames before the interval. That was a nerve tingler, that one. Seven. Eight. On this occasion, though, Willie Brake building very difficult. Pink and black both, temporarily at least, out of commission. as you rightly say Phil what John will be doing now he's trying to get the angle on the blue off this red the half ball angle well, now what he'll be trying to do now is kiss right into those reds and just hope he gets a good kiss on the reds to be able to move either pink or black out into the open let's just see whether he can get one of these colours from this no nothing much has happened once again, he's going to have to play out for the blue. 19. Any sort of kiss would have helped there, but pink and black didn't move at all. 20. This time he's short of ideal position. I've been saying that, Phil, he's got the second best thing. Appears to be virtually straight on the blue. Not easy to get onto the next red with that. There's one over the bottom pocket under his right hand, but of course he hasn't really got the angle to get onto that one. Well, that's a clever shot. He'd cue ball. He played like a stun screw there to force the angle. The direct angle would have been a foot further to the left. Look, watch the cue ball there. He's bounced the cue ball into the blue to get the white to come back off a different angle. So instead of not being able to pop this red near the middle, uh, the corner pocket, it's now on. So an excellent shot. You know they've got every trick in the book. They might be 19, but really it's hard to imagine them improving on current form. Of course, they'll get more experience as the years go by. But in terms of actual potting and break building, it's hard to imagine them being any better. 26. I think it's impossible to get any better unless you just can't be any better. Every time they get in the balls with the opening there, they score and put the frame beyond doubt. Well, will he, a lot of loose reds. Will he risk having another kiss at trying to get one of these out into the open? He's trying. Yeah. He won't be happy with that. I don't think he actually played a kiss then. I think he probably just played a glance, glance by them rather than hit them. But should be able to put, be able to put Ronnie back in trouble here, though. And this, for me, has been the difference in the whole John match. John Higgins, 31. I'm saying that this red is on, but I'm not sure from the angle we're at whether we can get around the back of the pack off this loose red. I think it's just about on to get around the back of the pack, so he'll be taking this one on. And the way he's looking at it, he's even thinking of risking coming in the red next to the pink. Ah, oh, great pop. Yes, I'm just making sure the angle is there. Oh, perfect angle on either yellow or green. Look at the angle, he's judged that to perfection around the back of the pack. And once again, same scenario, plenty of loose reds. The black is probably open now into the top right-hand corner pocket. Will he play to move them out? Yes, he's gone. Well, he took a risk there, trying to get the pink and black open. Three. That's brilliant. Four. There was a lot of pressure on that pot, Phil. Maybe it's John Higgins is going to feel the pressure in the next few minutes. That's unfortunate, though. Well, he's had four tries to Six. get the pink and black out of the open. That's both players, two each. And still, well, this is a dangerous pot. Great shot. Seven. 
Well, one more good positional shot. This is a chance. It's not easy to get onto a red from here, though. Just the one loose one at this end, and this looks a great shot as well. Fabulous shot. Well, you just run out of superlatives to describe this match today. 30. The highest standard imaginable. And all with so much at stake. Well, if Ronnie can get that black back onto the pink spot, which would make the scoring a lot easier 60. with the pink still being out of commission. Obviously a frame with an opportunity at the moment, but still needs one of those big colours back on the spot. 70. We've seen a lot of rest shots potted by Ronnie O'Sullivan, but under this amount of pressure, this is not so easy. Well, it never touched the sides. Fantastic shot. 22. <coughs> 24. Referee John Williams just called 22 then. In fact, it was 24. Too long to correct him on the mistake. Well, the frame win opportunity wasn't there when Ronnie came to the 22. table. He's made this a frame win opportunity. 33. A little bit careless there. No real need, I didn't think, to bring that red out at that particular time. We have to make sure he got 20 or 30 points in front. But the bounce is back into his step, isn't he? He's certainly looking, looking good again now. You watch when he pots this, how quick he'll move around the table. He's really got that feeling again. Just a fraction too hard. 38. Well, he's going to have a go at this one. You know, Willie, he won his first Pro-Am title when he was 12 years of age. He was playing in a pretty tough school. He made his first century when he was 10. He just keeps on producing the goods. Oh. Not on that occasion, though. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 39. John Higgins. He's always going to be difficult, though, from there, Willie. Really. Yes, he was trying to banana right a little bit with the other right hand side, and he was actually trying to kiss the red out next to the pink. What a great shot that would have been. But what a contribution that was. The break, I believe, was something like 35. And it was as good a 35 break as I've ever seen. Well, there again, we see the difference of the two players' safety play. Higgins very rarely today has played a bad safety shot. That's one of his best. Foul. And a miss. And a free ball as well, Willie. John Higgins. Four. Actually, I'm not sure when the white goes on the green spot, it is a free ball. I don't think it is, because I'll tell you for why. If you, if you remove the red away from the one nearest the black, you can see both sides of that other red. Now, this is a mistake. I will assure you this is not a free ball. The only thing that John Williams can consider being right there is if the pink is covering the red half ball, but I honestly think he can hit both sides of that red one. next to the pink. Now, if it is a mistake, what a time to make one. One thing I will say in defence of John Williams, Willie, we're looking from the wrong end of the table. Six. The other thing, of course, surely O'Sullivan would have complained. Well, we'll see what happens here. When, when this red's removed, we can have a quick look from our camera angle from green spot to red and pink again, now that red's out of the way. The white would have been exactly on the green spot, look. 
there you see you can clearly see the red both sides now whether now whether at the pink is in the way of course to be able to stop him hitting the red on on the right hand side we'll never know but it is certainly a point of contention especially when he sort of loses the flame 14. Twenty-one. Twenty-one the break. Twenty-one points the difference. That means John Higgins requires yellow and green to leave O'Sullivan needing a snooker. And I'll tell you what, Willie, if he went three up with four to play, he'd be extremely difficult to beat. Yes, and one has to feel a little bit sorry for Ronnie there because he did look like winning the frame, and without that enough, we could have been looking at 7-6. What a difference 8-5 to 7-6 is. Um, if he gets on the green, the frame's over, but if it's touching ball, it's not. Well, he should pop this, really. This is a big shot, though. I'm just going to say, Willie, very missable, especially with the cue ball so close to it. Tough to judge these angles. Now, once again, that was experience. He played it into the bottom pocket, knowing that if he missed it, he would have probably got the snooker behind the down. That was another clever shot from John Higgins. If this goes in, the frame is beyond doubt. Well, 8-5. 30. Oh, Sullivan conceded one frame this evening when he only needed one snooker on the green. And now we're in deep trouble. Here in the 13th, don't think he'll come out of his chair. I'm right. The nod arrives. 30. That's the concession. John Higgins, 8-5 up. Within one frame of becoming the 1995 Castella Classic, British Open champion. Can't work as hard as Right Guard with double protection. Chicken tonight, honey and mustard. I feel like chicken tonight. Made with clover honey and tangy mustard. Chicken tonight. If your mouth could only speak, it would ask for a paste with a clean feel of soda. Now let's talk about the taste with your stripe Aquifresh. By carbonate, you can have your cake and eat it. It feels clean. Tastes great. The first bicarbonate tastes aquafresh. Ronnie O'Sullivan is the defending British Open champion. He's going to become the first player in this tournament's 10 year history to make a successful defence. He's got to win the next four frames. He's at the point of no return. John Higgins leads by eight frames to five. And I'm sure I speak for all the millions of Sky Sports viewers out there. I'd love to see Ronnie O'Sullivan win at least two more frames, just to see what John Higgins becomes like under extreme pressure, because this match has been one of the best I've ever seen.
You know, Willie in the final of the International Open back in February, Steve Davis. But John Ingen's under an awful lot of pressure in that final. He responded, came through, and so far today, he's done exactly the same. And the only thing I can say in defence of that comment was the fact that Steve Davis may have put him under pressure in the safety department. Oh, there, that's a fluke. What a shame. What a shame to score the match at this stage. One. Steve Davis, of course, outplayed or at least played as good as John Higgins with his safety, but didn't score like Ronnie O'Sullivan scored today. It was a different sort of pressure. Let's give John a good chance to get a few points on the board. He's got a difficult red to the middle. Well, difficult for most players. Certainly missable, Willie. Yes, and the pace he's going to have to play, it's going to make it more difficult because he needs to get quite high on the blue. Well, I never touch the sides. Fine. I think, in fairness, he got a slight little kick there which stopped him running through the other side of the blue. Just watch the cue ball there. You may see a little bit of a bounce. Yeah, just bounce a little bit. Just have a red loose at the outside of the pack. And no heroics with the blue. Needs to definitely get a good angle on the blow off this next red though, if he's going to continue okay. this break. It's a 11. strange choice, but not really strange when you consider how well he's potting. Didn't have the rare tangle, so he's left the more difficult blow into the top pocket. Well, he's queuing that well. He's completely overscrewed that by two feet. That's how well he's queuing. That's not a bad shot, that's just the adrenaline pumping. 16. He knows that was a chance to win frame and match. And once again, an John excellent Higgins, safety 16. shot. Actually played with a little bit of left-hand side there, or right-hand side, I should say, for the... I was right the first time, left-hand side for the white to drift white, to try and snook it behind the brown, so it was a clever shot. Maybe a shot to nothing. Available now. Certainly Higgins has got the initiative. Mm, there seems a bit of value in that attempt in the pot in the top right-hand corner, but he's playing the better safety, so he's trying to open these reds out and put him under a bit more pressure. And once again, an excellent safety shot. That has been the difference, hasn't it, today? His safety has been so much better than Ronnie O'Sullivan's. Yes, it's the difference in their general makeup, let alone today. And in off cost well, Ronnie O'Sullivan in the previous John frame. Will he do the same in this one? Well, this will tell a lot about John Higgins. Got the long straight red. Will he risk stunning down and finish it on the black? If it goes in and he gets on the black, it's a frame winner. Or will he play the shot to nothing around the back of the reds, trying to get onto the pink in the middle? Or oh, the angle he's left himself. He may not be playing for the black unless he's playing to kiss the red on the back cushion. He's played the kiss and missed it. <laughs> played to kiss the red on the cushion to stay on the black. That's why the position's not there. One. I think we'll just see him. Playing off this pink. pink. Nice and thin. Back up to the safety of bulk. John Higgins won. Even then, John Higgins was trying to put the pink safe, even though there's only 21 points in front. He was thinking of putting the pink safe as well there, trying to make it really difficult for Ronnie O'Sullivan to score, and it's working. He's getting Ronnie playing, playing loose shots at the moment. To me, O'Sullivan looks demoralised. Playing those last few shots very quickly. He knows the size of the task ahead. It's a daunting prospect, especially with John Higgins playing so solidly.
Oh, that's unlucky. He took the ball by the horns there. Well, how are you going to play safe here? Reds everywhere, snookered on all colours. Not only has he had to hit a colour, it's going to be difficult to get safe. I'm not sure whether he can get through to the brown. Ideally, you would like to put the cue ball in the left-hand corner of the table. Yellow ball. Can he do it? Well, if he doesn't hit this full ball, it could have cost him the frame. Oh, great shot. Any kiss other than full ball, he would have left a red. Very, very good shot. Ronnie O'Sullivan special. One. Oh, what a great pot. The blue's available. The blue's in. Wouldn't surprise me if Ronnie decided to play for the pink off this red. Six. Needs to get that back up the business end of the table. Seven. Well, he's going to wait for a little while, but it's hard to win the frame where the pink and black is at the moment. He'd love to finish straight on this. 11. That's a great shot. He can get on the black now. Twelve. You know, the one thing in O'Sullivan's favour, Willie, he can win three or four frames in the blink of an eye. Nineteen. So I really would 20. like to see him with at least two of those three you were talking about, just to see a little bit of tension involved. There's obviously a lot of tension involved with it being the final of a major ranking event. I'd love to see it go close. It's nice to see who mentally is stronger in this position. You're a sadist, Willie. You like to see them both sweat. Twenty-six. Well, he may have knocked those two reds into a plant that would be a reprieve, because if he hasn't, he's unlucky. If those two reds are a plant, it's worked in his favour. Well, the look to the commentary box tells us he just had a look at me in the commentary box there and shook, held his hand out to say it's not quite a plant. So a little bit of work to do yet if he's going to win this frame in this visit. Well, again, he's played it too well. He did a miracle to get the angle on the red there to come out that eye for the black. It's now not easy to get onto the next red. That's why he's seeing him play a difficult one. In the Big shot. 41. Great shot. 42. Great shot. The middle pocket potting of both these players today has been a revelation. And this just shows how unfortunate Ronnie was to make those two reds just off plant. He's having another look. It, it can be made. It's set actually for the top left hand jaw. 48. This will tell us whether he thinks it's makeable or not. His next shot, he'll either play to kiss him if he doesn't think the plant's easy. 49. Well, he's played to kiss the second red. What a great effort. 53. 53 the break, 31 the difference. Fifty-four. Oh, that couldn't have worked out better for it. Fifty-nine. That removes any doubt. Sixty. This great match is going to continue. Sixty-seven. 
once again the frame secured the, frame. the concentration lost 67 break though a 10 minute affair Ronnie O'Sullivan stays in the match John Higgins now leads what, eight frames to six begun the fight back at eight five, eight five down he needed all four frames now he needs the closing three the tension really building here it's been a magnificent match so far what will happen next You know, John Higgins' great season all started at the Skoda Grand Prix when he beat Dave Harold 9-6 in the final there. Can you repeat that scoreline here tonight? Certainly got the first chance here. Does that look tell a story? Is he going to get back to the table? This is when all you can do is just sit there and hope they don't make more than 40. <coughs> Awkward queuing this. Eight. Just contemplating taking on the lung red to a bulk pocket. He's only going to drop this in, so no real work with the cue ball. As long as he doesn't inflict any side, it's no problem. Yeah, that's a great shot. Nine. I think when you're playing queuing high above the ball like that, if you just put the slightest bit of side on, you swerve the cue ball, and you can miss those. Look very easy at home. You've got to hit the ball in the middle of those shots. And this is perfect now. 16. If you were a Ronnie O'Sullivan fan, I fear the worst. 17. Two reds still open. The one on the bottom left-hand side of the bunch. And he plays for the other one. This one, of course, will clear the way for that red you're talking about, 24. Phil. So no real need to play into the pack of reds yet. Twenty-five. <coughs> now this is interesting. Will he play low on the red so that in potting the next red he can open the pack and go up for the blue? Or will he play to get onto it straight? Then have to get onto the black to be able to mo move the reds. Let's just see whether he finishes low on this red. He actually looks like he's going to play it in the middle. Well, with that shot. We're never going to know what was in his mind now. 32. No option now but to play for black or blue to open the pack. Yes, there was pressure on that one. And I think he's knocked John a red Higgins, out. 32. No, certainly has, Willie. And I'm sure O'Sullivan will play this with extreme power to develop the other reds. Well, just flicking off them. Not taking my advice, one. but they've developed anyway. Yes, and saying that, Freddie had a better angle than we thought. I, like you, thought it needed a bit of pace to bring three or four reds out in the open, but it didn't. Oh, we've had some twists and turns Eight. in this match. Are we going to have another one? Nine. Sixteen. Well, he played for the choice of two reds, and he's finished exactly where he played on two reds.
17. He wasn't waiting for the clearance of the two or three loose reds. 24. The first opportunity again into the pack. Oh dear. Oh, he could live to regret Royal that Royal Sullivan, one. 24. You know, Willie, there have been so few unforced errors in that department. Missing an easy ball. When a player does it, it comes as a major shock. I think Ronnie and everybody in the audience knew that that was a massive shot. If it goes in, he was favourite to win the frame. They're even praying for results now. Well, he missed the kiss. Oh, super shot. One. Every chance now, Willie. Eight. Every chance to win the title. He'll certainly be going up for the blue off this red. Nine. The only problem for John here, mustn't kiss the brown or yellow on the way back in and out of Bork. This is a big chance. Great shot. Fourteen. Down under, you know, last summer, John Higgins won the Australian Open title. Since then, he's had most of his opponents down under. Fifteen. It's been a memorable season. This would be another magnificent episode in it. Well, it really needs to be a lot closer to the cushion 20. than this. I know that <laughs> this looks easy, but with the rest, and you've got to play this shot with check side, because if you play it plain ball, the white's going to finish on the side cushion. Now, I don't for one minute think you'll miss it, but with the pressure, it's a possibility. Made to look very easy. But look where the cue ball is. He didn't play it with that amount of side we were talking 21. about. So now still a little bit of work to do. Yes, these rolled blues, difficult at the best of times, under pressure. And the cue on is not exactly at its most fluent. They're missable. No problem. Well, that was a difficult shot look to make. Very easy indeed. The lead, 34. So just two more reds and colours. 27. We'll leave Ronnie O'Sullivan with no chance. <coughs> this truly has been one of the most enjoyable matches I've ever had the privilege to watch 34. and commentate on. And there's no discredit to Ronnie O'Sullivan there. He now knows this title is slipping away. Just a couple of loose safety shots have been the only difference in this match. They're both scored and played 35. fantastic. Yes, Ronnie O'Sullivan's already done something that no one else has done before. That's to return as the defending champion and reach the final. But now his crown has slipped. It just shows John Higgins, well, 50 points 42. in it. Will he carry on this time? It's the easiest red missed in the match so far. John Higgins can't quite believe it. Two reds on the table. Ronnie O'Sullivan needs two snookers. Not out of the question, One. you know. Not out of the question. Especially where this last red is. This first snooker is going to be tight behind the black after the next shot. Now, if he gets the red near one of the bought colours, Eight. he could force a free ball. Really needs to get this red close to a bought colour to make it very, very difficult for John. Well, that's exactly what he didn't want. He didn't want this red out into the open. Ronnie O'Sullivan, eight. However, it's got to be hit. And if he didn't hit it, one snooker. 
was not quite as big a problem. The pace of the shot, of course, also important. The last thing John Higgins wants to do, if he does miss the red, is leave a free ball. That's the reason. 42 points divides the players, 35 still available. It's just amazing how many times you see the winning post at this game. That's what John Higgins has done. Wow. Ronnie O'Sullivan, five. Any other time that would have been deemed a miss, but of course it can't be a miss this time as his opponent needed a snooker. He missed that by the proverbial mile. He knows he had the frame of match one. He's now got to sweat for a few minutes longer. You know, Ronnie O'Sullivan escaped the stray jacket in the last 32. And he came back in 4-3 down to beat Dennis Taylor 5-4. Made a 61 clearance to win the eighth frame there on the black. Surely, he won't make another great escape. Every chance, though. Well, let me say this. There's room behind the back of this red. He's finished in exactly the right position to make this difficult enough for John Higgins to know. If he gets a little bit too much side on, he may go around the back of this red. Well, he'd be delighted to see that after one minute. I thought it was going around the back. <laughs> this one is virtually unmissable, though, this time. He may even get a snooker back. Well, big chance for Ronnie this time. And I bet John Higgins is standing there saying, why didn't I just pop that easy red? Undoubtedly, though, he thought he crossed the winning line and he's gone. Just dropped for a second. What a brilliant shot this was. That is so unlucky. A little bit more side that you could see the white ball drifting in behind that. And there's our number one snooker fan. He's as intense as we are. Oh, I don't know whether Ronnie's going to pot red and black here. There's the red, but needs to pot this colour. If he misses it, One. he's lost. <laughs> the miss and the concession. Sorry, Willie, what a great... Final, what a great result for John Higgins. He really has scored heavily throughout, and that in the end was what won it in. A break of 32 and 42 in the last frame. John Higgins has won his third ranking event of the season. The Skoda Grand Prix, the International Open, and now the British Open. His family are pleased, and the whole, I'm sh the whole of snooker, I'm sure, delighted for him. A £60,000 first prize, and you know Willie now, he's earned £271,000 this season. Absolutely this player is going to be around for years to come. His opponent, too. I can honestly say it's one of the most enjoyable matches that I've ever watched in my life. And before we make the presentation to the runner-up and the winner, we're now going to make a mention of the top break prize. We've had some tremendous snooker here this week. We've had 24 breaks of over 100 and four breaks of over 140. And the top break prize this year was won by the world champion, Stephen Hendry, with his magnificent 145 total clearance. And ladies and gentlemen, now we come to the runner-up in this year's Castella Classic British Ocean. And I can't tell you what a contribution he's made to this tournament. He gets a cheque for £32,000. Ladies and gentlemen, our congratulations go to Ronnie O'Sullivan.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, to this winner, a cheque for, for £60,000, rather, a beautiful trophy, a bottle of Moe champagne to celebrate this win tonight, and, of course, the title of the 1995 Castella Classic British Open champion, John Higgins. <laughs> And ladies and gentlemen, right now we're going to ask John just to say a few words to you, but I know you'd like to show your appreciation for a young man who just run off the set here. He's left the evening to the man who's won the title, a great sportsman, a great player, ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie O'Sullivan. Thank you very much. And the presentation party. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Well, John, another tremendous achievement this week. Five titles that this year, this year you've gone for. You've won three of them. Say a few words to these lovely people here who have supported the event so well. John Higgins. First of all, again, I'm getting quite used to this, so it's been good. So uh, I'd like to thank the, the crowd. The crowd was magnificent. Oh, they've been all week. They were great tonight. Uh, I'd like to thank Castella, the sponsors, the WPBSA. I'd like to thank everybody here and all my family, my mum, my dad, my girlfriend, everybody that's down, my little brother, and Big Vic as well, and uh, his boy. I'd just like to thank everybody. I mean, I'm just delighted to beat who I think the best player in the world. I've never played Stephen Henry, but he's playing the best stuff now, Ronnie, you know what I mean? So I'm just delighted to beat probably the best player in the world just now, so I'm just delighted. Thanks a lot. Thanks. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight belongs to the new Castella Clarion British Open champion, John Higgins. John Higgins, ladies and gentlemen. John Higgins with the rewards of victory. A magnificent performance here. He started off with two century breaks in the first match here on the main match table, eight days ago against Terry Griffiths. He finished off magnificently. He's now won £271,000 in prize money this season. The Australian Open, the Skoda Grand Prix title, the International Open title, and now the Castella Classic British Open title. It's been a memorable season for John Higgins. And you know, he's actually earned more ranking points this season than any other player. This victory takes him above Stephen Hendry in that list. He's second in the money list. And he goes to the World Championship brimming with confidence. Who can say that John Higgins, a 19-year-old, won't become the youngest ever winner of the World Championship? He's got all the credentials, temperament, class, quality, high break building, and a very good safety game. There's his delighted father. We've seen a memorable evening snooker, and maybe the birth of a new champion. He's certainly one of the best players I've ever seen, and for his age, He's truly remarkable. breathtaking stuff wasn't it and a deserving winner 
of the 1995 Castella Classic <laughs> British Open title. Congratulations to you, John. Yes. Still trembling a bit after that final frame, were not you? Can't stop shaking here. I, can. I, I thought I'd threw away there. I mean, that last frame, I was fifth in front of two reds, and I went down on the second last red, and I just couldn't hold the queue. I was shaking that much. And I've well, you just thought the match was I over? I thought it was, well, I thought it was over, but then I've looked up at the scoreboard and I'm saying, oh, no, because the red was lined perfect for Ronnie to get a snooker after pot, after red, pot and red black. And I was like, oh, no, I'm going to lose 98, you know what I mean? But, <laughs> but I'm just delighted, you know what I mean, to come through. And overall, you, you played some scintillating stuff tonight. It was you? a great game, I thought, you know what I mean? I thought it was a really good game. Maybe Ronnie, maybe he might say he never played good, but... Oh, no, Ronnie never missed a ball, I to thought, be fair. I thought it was a brilliant game, you know what I mean? And I think right now, now, he is playing, when he gets in about the ball, he's just deadly. I mean, one chance and now that's it, you know what I mean? Sometimes, and I'm just delighted to have beat him, you know what I mean? Mm. What a season good. this has been for you. It's beyond your wildest dream, isn't it? You're can't gathering it, the stuff. titles like leaves. I know, I can't believe it. I mean, I knew people were always telling me I was going to maybe get there, but I didn't know I was maybe going to do this, maybe win three tournaments this year. And, Stuck with the world to go, so I'm just going to go there and enjoy myself at the world. I mean, I've done brilliant this season, so I'm just going to go and enjoy it now. Mm. J just assess his performance for us, will you, would you? Well, his improvement is, is surprised me. I played him out in Australia in his, fir his first tournament victory, and he, and he beat me 9-5, 9-6, and I thought, well, this kid's a great player. But the next two or three months, he's just improved 100%. The improvement every single tournament has been that massive. It was, it was almost unquestionable, you know, I mean... The, We've always known you're going to be very, very good, but yeah. it must, like you say, it surprise you immensely, oh, I would think, oh, to have done what you've oh, done. You're right. I mean, I couldn't believe now doing this. After I got through the two finals, Ronnie beat me 9-3 and Steve beat me 9-3, and I was saying, oh, maybe that was going to put me a bit of a downer. But I've come back and I've beat Steve and I've beat Ronnie, so just delighted, you know what I mean? Just you are provisionally number one now on the ranking list Is that what it is? Oh, I don't think <laughs> Mr Doyle will be happy about that. Eh? <laughs> but, eh, nah, it's good, you know what I mean? But well, obviously Stephen Henry's still number one in the world. And Absolutely. Well, we're going to embarrass you there now because I, I know that, I mean, 19 years of age, we've got a young man sitting alongside us, Mark Johnston Allen. And Mark, I mean, the maturity he shows at the table uh, as a 19-year-old is just unbelievable, isn't it? Well, I was just thinking then as John was chatting that I'm 26 years of age and I feel quite young before John walked in a minute ago. But I'm seriously thinking about retiring. <laughs> <laughs> and what are you going to be doing, Willie? I'm retired. retired a long time ago. <laughs> I can't play snooker like these two played today. It was just absolutely fantastic. It was fantastic. tremendous snooker. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Mm. It was brilliant. Gather at the moment uh, your parents are watching uh, oh, up in the oh, play. Oh, They've been here all the time, oh, but actually oh, there we are. I can oh, see oh, them oh, now. Oh, 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 There's John and Josephine. <laughs> Pretty proud, aren't they? And, uh, Did you give John a wave? Oh, well, they were hugging each other at... The they were hugging each other at the end, and they haven't had too much time to say anything to them yet, but uh, they're very proud. Your dad's been down here all week, of course, and... Yeah, it's uh, been brilliant. My dad's been great company, you know what I mean? So, I'll, I've, since he's started coming on, I've started doing really good, you know what I mean? So, mm. delighted to be here. I mean, I mean it's smashing. You spend, you know, so much time in each other's company as well. He's obviously, you know, a very yeah. calming influence uh, on you. It gets on your nerves sometimes. <laughs> you've, you've just got to slap him, you know what I mean? But, uh, but it's good, you know what I mean? He's a just good guy. Just have a little look at the 60,000 check. Would you like me to invest this on the first favourite for no, you tomorrow? No, the to, second uh... favourite, because you don't pick really good favourites, do you? I mean, <laughs> he hasn't got a <laughs> second favourite I'll go for, you know what I mean? He hasn't got as many bad habits no, as you no, yet, no. will he? I've never no. held 60,000 for so, such a long time. That's wonderful. Well played. It was wonderful. Yeah. It was wonderful. Um, now then, let's just look ahead just momentarily, shall we? This is a, a big championship, the British Open title. Uh, £60,000 check. You've got the World Championship coming up. And, of course, you take on Alan McManus mm. in the first round. There. It couldn't be much tougher, could I it? I know. I mean, it's one of the games I didn't really want. Now, I didn't want to play another Scotsman, you know what I mean? The first time there, plus he's, he's a mate as well, you know what I mean? So, you've just got to get in and just try and blot, blot out your mind now he's your friend and that. So, I've never been to Crucible before. It's got to be a new experience. It, I'm just going to try and go out and enjoy it. But as Willie and Tom and Mark, they've been there, you know what I mean? Everybody says it's the most frightening thing, walking through that curtain. You're going to have to give some of the others a chance, John, at yeah, some no, stage. No. Congratulations yeah, again tonight. Uh, the crowds, well, they flocked to see Hurricane Higgins at the start of this tournament. They've left here with lasting memories of the other Higgins, the man who's dominating the game now, John Higgins. Today, Britain, next to the world, well, don't bet against it. John Higgins, the 1995 Castella Classic British Open champion. Very good night to you. Bye-bye. <laughs>
beside a river over you Moonlight becomes you It goes with your hair You certainly know the right thing to wear Moonlight becomes you I'm thrilled at the sound So romantic tonight. You're all dressed up to go dreaming. Now don't tell me I'm wrong. And what a night to go dreaming. If I tag along, I'm mad about the boy. And I know it's stupid to be mad about the boy. I'm so ashamed of it, but must admit the sleepless nights I've had about the boy. silver screen he melts my foolish heart in every single scene although I'm quite aware that here and there are traces of the can about the boy I'm feeling quite insane and young again all because I'm mad about the boy. Because of the early conclusion to tonight.